I was watching the news, one of the newscasters was chatting about the American President Barack Obama, and he said one of the stupidest things I have heard all year. He said, Barack Obama is a phenomenon, not because he's the first black president, but because his is the first black family in the White House. <laughs> and I thought, you've never watched Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, have you? <laughs> mixed race and so am I. Uh, he's African American and I'm Jewish and Geordie. <laughs> I am. I'm a Jew Geordie, which is the opposite of a Judge Judy. <laughs> are there any Jews in tonight? <laughs> You're fucking proud, aren't you? <laughs> it is rare that Jews will voluntarily put their hands up in that sort of situation. Normally it's like people have memories, let's not do this. <laughs> This isn't the, your first time at Spank, is it? You've been here many a time. Uh, no, this is my very first Spank. Oh my God! Yeah, no, it was the, that. That was it. That was that was my Spank cherry popped. Did you love it? I bloody loved it. It was really exciting. You're a natural, there, because that room, the room has no respect. We like to say for anyone. So you did really well, lovely. That was awesome. Yeah, thanks. I, I kind of think I did. I'm, I, I, if I'm honest, I'm still in a post gig sort of haze. You know, certain gigs you remember. Yeah. And that gig, I just kind of went right. <laughs> put the stuff out there, and I, I think I had a nice time. You're saying Spank's like comedy row hypnol, essentially, there. You just black out. It's that brilliant. Um, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I feel like I've woken up the next morning, and I'm covered in bruises and a few kiss marks, and there's an empty tequila bottle in the corner, and Spank is just putting on its tie and going, I'll see you next time, sunshine. No, I'm, I'm very proud of my Jewish heritage. Like, 1938, my grandparents ran away from Hitler. Because uh, running towards it would have been foolish. <laughs> and they ran away to Newcastle, and I reckon they moved there, because in a Geordie accent, the word swastika <laughs> sounds a lot less threatening. <laughs> like, in a Geordie accent, the word swastika sounds like something that used to be a sticker. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm now moved down from Newcastle, I live in Camden Town, which is awesome. If you've not been to Camden, it's like the countercultural capital of London. It's what the entire world would look like if breast milk turned to special brew. <laughs> and what I love about it is, is, is the wildlife there. You get punks, you get hippies, and you get goths. And I love a good goth. Because a goth doing anything other than be a goth is innately funny. <laughs> Last Monday, I was walking down by the canal in Camden and I saw some goths fishing. <laughs> Under the chief one. If you caught anything, just a trout with chlamydia. <laughs> what are you using as bait? Misery. <laughs> what is your favourite joke in your set at the moment? The one you've worked on really hard and honed. Uh, oh Christ, my favourite joke. I uh... right. I'll be honest. I've got a favourite joke that has a sort of. Uh, it's, the audience have a love-hate relationship okay. with it. Um, I wrote it and went, that's definitely the best thing I've ever written. Were you uh, drunk? Were you drunk at the time? I do that I sometimes. No, I was, I, was, I was fucking about on Twitter. It's the only Twitter joke that's ever worked. Right. And uh, I went out on stage and the first time I told it, got nothing. And then for the next three months, it got massive rounds of applause. And now, like, some nights the audience look at me like I'm racist. And some nights the audience look at me like I'm a comedy genius. And I, I quite enjoy that. The thing is, like, I, like, this time last year, I was in Edinburgh watching, like, Camden be fucking beat up because of the riots. And uh, I came back, one of my friends trying to make me feel better about it. And this is a mate who lives in Kensington, very posh part of town, said, Ben, don't worry, we have knife crime in Kensington too. I thought you don't have knife crime in Kensington. You have jousting. <laughs> I'm not going to be lectured on knife crime on someone whose blood type is sherry. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> I think it's kind of, I like Camden, but it's a bit scruffy, right? Like, me, me and my girlfriend in our house is currently infested with mice, so it's horrible. I'm starting to think the landlady grabbed the kitchen with brie. And my girlfriend said, right, you've got to kill them, but do it humanely. So we've got these humane mouse traps, which are little sticky bits of cardboard, and you put them down, and the mouse comes along, and it gets stuck on there, and then you give it a lethal injection. I don't know. <laughs> And I came home, like, before I came to Edinburgh, I came home, saw this mother, and it was gnawing away at its paw, and it looked up at me as if to say, help me, Frodo. <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to I'm gonna have to put it out of its misery. So I've got a couple of choices. I can peel it off, but I'm not spending my Monday nights giving Stuart Little a back sack and crack. <laughs> I, could, I could use it as an alternative fridge magnet, but that's not going to happen. Or I could kill it, so I thought, all right, I'll kill it. So I... 
I, I saw this little eyes looking at me and I thought, oh my god, it's so cute. I'm going to have to give it a death mask. So I got a black sock from the drawer, put it on there. And then I went to the bookcase and I pulled out the Oxford English Dictionary. Oh yeah. And I held it over the mouse. And I thought, I can't do this. This is wrong. This is inhumane. So I've got a French dictionary. <laughs> C'est la vie. <laughs> but I've I got to be a dirty big I don't know what you call an alpha male. Do you have any alpha males in the room? <laughs> That's the sound of every wife and girlfriend going, don't even think about it, Darren. <laughs> you know, I'm clearly not an alpha male. You can't be an alpha male when you look like the annoying child from Outnumbered. <laughs> One day I'm going to knock on his dressing room door at the BBC and go, quick, I haven't got long, I'm you from the future. <laughs> it all goes wrong. But it means that I, I can't be like the, the strong man that my, that my girlfriend wants. I'll give you an example. I, basically, the first time we had sex, it all went tremendously wrong. Because sex is an odd thing, right? I was doing a gig a few weeks ago in Cornwall, had to stay overnight in a hotel, and I could hear the couple in the room next to me start to have sex. And I couldn't hear anything vocal. All I could hear was the thump of the bed against the wall, and it made this noise. <laughs> and I thought, are you having sex to the theme tune from Doctor Who? <laughs> and I wasn't sure, but after a while, a girl started to really get into it, and she went, ooh, <laughs> A few minutes later, I had the bloke go, inseminate, which really wasn't pretty. <laughs> One of my mates has got this theory about sex, and it's the music your parents listened to when you were conceived reflects the way you develop as a human being. And he worked this out by taking his birthday, working nine months back, top the pop charts, that's the music he was conceived to. And he was very proud, because that one he was conceived to smooth operator. Thought I'd find out a bit about myself, and I was conceived to Ernie, the fastest milkman in the West. <laughs> but I always say, like, sex is a weird thing, like, the first time you have sex with a lady, it's a little bit like a job interview, isn't it? Like, you want to leave a good first impression. And I think I did well in a brief survey after the event. 50% of the people involved described themselves as satisfied. <laughs> and I was in this beautiful post-coital position with my girlfriend. Her eyes were locked together and her genitalia was locked together. My naked mole rat was nuzzling in her warm burrow. <laughs> it's poetry time, kids. Strap in. <laughs> When my girlfriend did something I will never forgive her for, she looked me romantically in the eyes and she sneezed. <laughs> and she fired my little man out of her in what I can only describe as a vaginal Heimlich manoeuvre. <laughs>, <laughs>, Laughs of recognition, hello. <laughs> Thing is, as we all know from science, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So she fired my little man out of her at a rate of knots. I headbutted her in the face. <laughs> Luckily, she is Scottish, and that is how they mate. <laughs> and that ladies and gentlemen, she means delightful. I'll be back now, Catch you guys later. Uh, ben, what's your worst Edinburgh story? Because I know that you've been coming here a number of years, haven't you? How many years? Uh, I've been coming here eight years of the last nine. Wow. Yeah. Uh, basically, my uh, without wanting to sound too much like um, uh, a little rock and roll show off, because it really, really isn't me. But spit it out. just spit it out. Spit it out, little man. Uh, the first few years that I came to the Fringe, part of it was about performing, part of it was about uh, what naughty things I could ingest. And uh, four or five, five years ago was the first time that I, the only time that I've t taken LSD. And in Ed in Edinburgh. <laughs> Oh, this gets awfully litigious. Um, in, the, in Edinburgh, they have shared back gardens. And I was having a lovely time, I may point out. The clouds were great. The big oak tree looked like a big stick of broccoli. It was marvellous. When some of next door's kids come out dressed as cowboys and Indians. And I think, amazing! It's little midget cowboys and Indians. And I just start playing with them. Meanwhile, my two mates were also tripping up on the fire escape and they are trying to peel their face off in terror that I'm going to get them arrested. And the, the mother of these two kids sort of looks at them and goes, oh, isn't it so sweet? And my mates just kind of like mumble apologies and then wander inside whilst I'm sort of like flat on my back having little Indian jump up and down on my chest. It was great fun at the time, but on reflection, potentially arrestable child abuse. Ben Vanderveld, everyone, will play with children when on drugs. <laughs> now, in my opinion, on a boost morning walk home,
home, there is nothing better than a sausage and egg McMuffin. Sausage and egg McMuffin gives you just enough energy for when you get home to give yourself the wank of shame. <laughs> Are we familiar with the wank of shame? The one where you're going, even I think I don't deserve this. Such a shame. As I've always said, a good audience is like good cuisine. It takes just one dick in it to ruin it. 